place that feels like home To the people I can depend on To the faith that's in my bones Take me back to a preacher in a verse Where they've seen me at my worst To the love I had at first Oh, I wanna go to church God for this day that we come together you know we always say this so quickly we say we give you thanks but you know God we today I want us to particularly focus after Bill Blank's uh, 
introduction of our holiday program last week, the Be Rich, we do have a lot to be thankful for, particularly in this room. And you look around us and the people, and you, we, we, have, we have so much we don't even realize what we have. Help us, God, to not take that for granted and, and, and be appreciative. You know, and sometimes in our prayers, God, it's so easy to get up and we immediately go to, you know, help me with this, bless, you know, help us do things. And sometimes we kind of speed through that part of thanking you, that part of confessing when we fall short. But Thanksgiving is such an important part of our prayer life. Help us, God, to focus on that when we sit down in our quiet moments and zone in and, and think about what are we thankful for. And help us realize that those are gifts from you. We left up these people this morning that have challenges with their health. If we all live long enough, all of us are going to face some difficulties in our life. So we pray for them to give them strength. And also in that strength, there's a hope that you are a loving, healing God that is with us no matter what we go through in life. Strengthen them with that thought. Let us see ourselves continually as your child and look up to you in all that we do. Bless each and every person here this morning. Watch over us. Watch over our country. We ask all these things in your son's name we pray. Amen. I'm wearing a lot of hats this morning. so. Okay. It was kind of funny to me. Last week, Bill Blanks got up and he started talking about what I was going to preach about this week. I had no idea what I was going to preach about this week, but it seemed like he was kind of guiding me in the direction that I needed to go. So anyway, I, I left here kind of nervous about that, and I went home. I went to my office. I mean, I dug in. I mean, I shut the door, didn't even let the cat and dogs in there, and I just I wanted to be quiet and focused. I mean, I, I stayed there, and I, I prayed, and I, and I wrote, and I wrote, and I wrote until I got hand cramps. I got to have carpal tunnel surgery in a couple of weeks. So it was, and so I, I did all that. And so I'm so excited, and I'm thinking, man, this is good, you know. I mean, I've knocked this thing out. And I went home, and I, I, I said, Linda, listen to me. Let, me. let me tell you my sermon. And I did. And she looked at me like I just burped at the table when I got through with it. She had this look on her face like, and I was like, she said, I said, what's the matter? She said, that was not one of your best ones. <laughs> and I said, really? She said, no. And so, Linda, thank you for your honesty. Um, and so uh, I was flustered at the time, and I said, "Well, maybe you, you know, maybe you can do better, you know, that type of thing." And I said, "I said, well, I'm searching for something. You got anything?" And she said, "Yes." So, bang, my phone bangs, and she gives me the scripture. So, Linda, would you come up and preach today, please? <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that to you. Here's what the scripture is. It's a great one, and it's from a book that. Probably many of you are not, it's not number one on your reading list. It's from the book of Malachi. And Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament. And it's a great scripture, though. And let me kind of set this up for you. It's a, it's a scripture in the Bible where God is talking. You know, he's speaking to his people. And basically, he, it's, 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 it's funny what he does. He says, test me. See if you can outgive me. He challenges them. He tells them to test him. You say, oh, you're not supposed to test God. Well, he said here, test me. Let's, let me share this scripture. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord <laughs> Almighty. And see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. He said, Try it out and give me. See how it turns out for you. Okay, every time I stand up to deliver a message to this church, it's my intention to convince you that I'm right. I'm a natural salesman. I've had to sell all my life. But it's important that I try to persuade you to leave here and at least consider that what I tell you will work. Okay? Today, it, this is especially true. Because I know what I'm about to tell you will work. I'm positive of it. Let's look at two more little small scriptures real quick. Just to set the stage. 
First one is Proverbs 27, 20. The eyes of man are never satisfied. Let that sink in. The eyes of man are never satisfied. The next one is from Acts 20, 35, where the Apostle Paul is quoting Jesus, who said, it is more blessed to give than receive. We're going we're to work on those two scriptures this morning. Okay. Pastors and churches for years have pressured people for money. They just have. We never have. Never. Our program is like this. If you give more, we help more. People, causes, whatever it is. If you don't, we don't help more people. It's real simple. That's the way we've always done from day one. Now, if those of you that were back at day one when we had zero overhead, we gave away 100% of what we got. We're not quite at 100 now, but we'll shock you. We'll shock you how much we give. Many of you know this already, but I, if you don't, I think it's important that you do know it. Because I'm kind of proud of it. And it's the truth. For all the years I have been your minister, regardless of the location that we were in, the barn here, whatever, I have never known what anybody in this church that worships gives. I have no clue what anybody gives financially, except for my wife and I. That's truth. The people that are treasurers and have been treasurers in church, you will back me up on that. I've never asked. I don't want to know. Someone once said to me, I'm glad you don't know, Mike, because it might cause you to show favorites. And I smiled and I said, nope. I don't want to know because it might make me mad. And I don't like to be disappointed. That might make me change who my favorites are. So I, I don't want to know. Okay, several weeks ago, I was invited to the home of a good friend. She's an attorney in Longview. Her name is Kristen Ishihara. Some of you may know her. She held a two-half-day event. It was Friday night and Saturday morning, and it was called The Journey of Generosity. We, Linda and I, didn't know anybody there except Kristen when we got there, and we came away with some new friends. It's a class that I will teach here in the future. I'm training for it now. It was life-changing for me. Now, those of you that know me very well, I don't say things like that flippantly, that it was life-changing for me. But it was life-changing. Years ago, I would guess around 2010, I'm, I can't recall the exact date, but I, I preached a sermon as I made a major decision in my life to step down, to retire in my prime, at least I thought I was, at the, at the, well, I was more prime then than I am now, at the ripe old age of 52 years old from my business career. Okay? It finally sunk in. The church was my passion. The title of that sermon, and some of you may remember, you, you were probably here, was When is Enough Enough? What defines success? Okay? You see, I had wrestled with my decision for a long time. And every time I would meet with friends, mentors, financial planners, whatever, the question was always the same. When is enough enough? But let's be specific. My question was really this. When is enough enough money? That's all I thought about. Nothing else really mattered. Will I have enough money to retire? But as time went by, other things did begin to matter. Some of you may know about this yourself. Things like health. Things like family. Things like happiness. I never thought about being happy. I just had to work. You know, it didn't, you didn't have to like it. And also there was this beating deep in my heart and deep in my soul that was just, I had trouble sleeping. I'd wake up thinking about it all the time and it was tugging at me. And what was tugging at me was my closest friend in the world, God. God was also saying to me, Mike, when is enough enough? When's enough? When are you going to finally do what I really want you to do? Now, without being with the armed, armed today with the experiences of being a few years older, 
Without realizing it, I chose a path that He wanted me to take. I was resisting it, but it was the path He wanted me on. I didn't know this when I went to the journey of generosity, and I experienced that. That's when I walked out of there, and it really, the light came on, and it is, it is more blessed to give than to receive. You know what the opposite of generosity is? Selfish. That's the opposite of generosity. Okay, with that in mind, how do I best describe to you how that weekend was life-changing? One thing ministers, priests, pastors, whatever you choose to call us, clergy, do a lot of is funerals. They're called more celebrations of life these days. I've done many. Most of you in this room have been to a funeral or celebration of life that I've had to preach. You've been there when I did the eulogy for someone. The eulogy to me is the most important part of that service. You think, whoa, whoa, why? Because, and I'll tell you why. It's when I take the words and the information that you give me. I just sit there and listen. Any of you that have ever planned a service with me, now you know exactly how this works. I listen and I take the words and information from family and friends that, that you want people to know about that person. That you want them to remember. And then it's my job to turn around and communicate that to the audience. It's an awesome responsibility when you think about it. To take a person's life and sum it up and bring it together. Okay. So today I'm going to do two eulogies for you. You ready? The first short eulogy will be for Mr. Ulysses Benjamin Selfish. Initials, you be selfish. Okay? U.B. Selfish lived for 70 years. He grew up middle class, was educated, worked in business, and was very successful financially. He never married, never had children. Both require time, attention, and, of course, money. U.B. insisted he was never given a dime in his life. He worked for every cent, and everything he owned was his and his alone. Mr. Selfish would attend church because that was the thing to do, to be seen, but scoffed at the thought of giving money because he didn't agree with how it was spent. After all, if the church wasn't going to give it to causes he personally approved of, he'd show them he just wouldn't give them any money, and he didn't. Most of the money he saw was given to stupid things. To needy people was ridiculous. Needy. All those needy people really needed was a job, a J-O-B. If they got a job or two jobs, that would solve their financial problems and they wouldn't be needy. Medical bills. People get behind on medical bills or they have family situations that come up. And the, the church was sponsored that. He said, bah humbug on that. If you'd have been smart enough to buy medical insurance at a low enough deductible, you wouldn't need a handout. Food pantry. He knew that this church gave to the food pantry. And the same answer there. Get a job. Quit begging for food. Once you're a beggar, you're always a beggar. You'll beg the rest of your life. Assistance. He hated that word, assistance, for people. He saw it as a weakness. You know, he would watch the church give stuff to, like, widows and causes that were helping people. Unwed mothers. He loved that one. He said... Shouldn't have got yourself in that mess in the first place. Counseling. The church would pay for people to get counseling, to seek assistance. Mental health. And lots of people don't have mental health covered. And addiction, addictions. His answer was simple there. Stop being weak. Tough up. Stop being a wimp. Volunteering. Volunteering. Mr. You be selfish never volunteered a day in his life. You know why? Because time equals money. If you wanted his time, show me the money. He'd jump right in there. You be selfish, always wanted more, newer things, better things, fancier things, things he deemed he needed in order to be happy. Bottom line, he wasn't a happy man. He could buy everything he wanted in this world financially. 
but happiness. Mr. You Be Selfish whole life can be summed up in Proverbs 27, 20. The eyes of man are never satisfied. You ready for eulogy number two? Number two. Number two is Mr. I Am Happy Generosity. His motto, for those of you that don't, that don't like to work out, there is no exercise better for the heart and soul than reaching out, helping out, and lifting others up. Mr. I.H. Generosity lived for 98 years. He died water skiing on Lake Cherokee barefoot one day. <laughs> he grew up middle class, was educated, and worked in the business, and was successful financially. He survived by his loving wife, three children, six grandchildren, who are here today to honor the man they respected and loved and learned how to live their life from. Okay? Okay. Mr. I.H. Generosity insisted he worked hard and he earned every dime he ever made. Thanks to the goodness of his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave him a work ethic and brains to go out and make a living to support his family. He gave him thanks daily. He gave him thanks daily at meals and led his family to believe that this scripture, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. He also was big at setting the example and he included his kids and family and everything he did to teach them and show them and to demonstrate to them how to be generous. Let me give you a few examples. He would take his family to an event at his church called the Trunk and Treat. And they would set up and they'd sit out in a parking lot and his kids would dress up and give candy away. So they could learn the experience of being generous. There was a event at his church called the market. He would volunteer to park cars. He would volunteer to clean up. He'd volunteer to take people around a golf cart. He would do anything, clean up, fix up anything just to help out. There was a men's cookouts at his church where he would show up and buy the groceries, go cook everything in it, clean up when everybody else got full and fat and headed home. He would clean everything up. He was that guy. He always babysitted the kids so his wife could go to every single ladies' event. He led or attended a Bible study and a small group. He taught an exercise class. He went to dance class with his wife. He didn't want to dance, but his wife did. He served communion each and every week. He cleaned out flower beds. He fixed sprinkler heads. He worked on a water well and, yes, even a stinking septic tank. He planted trees and he cut them down. He cleaned up after lunch each and every week after the fellowship meal and washed dishes, not just his own. You know what else he did? He, he cleaned an ice machine maker for years, a dirty ice machine maker, and patched it together week after week, continually fixing it. He would go to Kilgore, Texas each and every week and fetch chicken, bring it back, cut it up, throw it in a warmer so Everybody could have something to eat every single Sunday. He made iced tea. He put ice in cups. So when you came down the line, you just, bang, it magically was there. Okay, he would go to buy supplies at Sam's. On his own nickel, his own gas, his own time. So once again, magically toilet paper and utensils would just appear at his church. He bought and delivered hams, turkeys, chicken, for Thanksgiving and Christmas for people he didn't even know. Didn't even know. He prayed for every person on the prayer list each and every week. He fixed and made repairs at the homes of elderly and widows. They were not capable of doing it anymore. He would take loads of food to the Samaritan house every week out of a wagon in his church. Every week. He built and ins installed a new sign holder out by the road. Went out there, measured it. A couple of buddies of him dug the holes, measured it, put it up, so people would know about events happening at this church that he attended. He would put out ant poison, killed ant beds, so people wouldn't get stung. He worked on the parking lot. He not only worked on the parking lot, he donated the concrete and the rock, and then he'd go out there and took, made sure that we had a tractor to back drag it. He repaired plumbing in the bathrooms. 
He worked on the sound system for 20 years. Every Sunday, he would stand at the back and run the sound system. He also stood at the back and worked the overhead slides. You know the job that everybody knows when you mess up? He, was, he did that week after week and showed the videos. He led singing. He sang solos. He played the piano. He played the chimes when it was time to volunteer to do that. He also hauled, and I love this one, he hauled off trash every single Sunday because he realized he wasn't the only pick, and, pick up in the parking lot. Isn't that amazing? He, he would pack backpacks. He'd pack them, he'd buy the food for them, and then he would deliver them so those kids could have something to eat. He cooked a dish every Sunday for lunch, not just for himself, to feed other people. He decorated the church inside and out. He led Sunday school. He picked up donuts, which I failed to do this morning. He made coffee. He counted the money, made a bank deposit, tracked all the bills and the donations that people made for free every week. He called a person that visited our church. He invited someone to come to church. He checked on someone that was ill. He took food to someone that was ill or it had a death in their family. He helped park cars at funerals, funerals that he didn't even know the people. He gave up his seat on Christmas Eve and Easter to total strangers. He helped the elderly get to and from church because they weren't able to drive anymore safely. And here's the best part. He secretly would slip around and pay bills for people that needed it never expecting thanks, and in fact, did it anonymously. He set the example for his children. The event I attended with Linda, my wife, was life-changing. You see, all my life I had been convinced or guilted by pastors into believing that just like my retirement plan, all that really mattered was money. That's all that really mattered. That I had to give at least a certain percentage to be good enough or worthy. The fact is this, I subscribe to many <laughs> magazines that are about church. The fact is less than 5% of the Christians in the United States, Jesus followers, tithe. Less than 5%. Just a, just a fact, it's true. When I retired and my income dropped dramatically, I felt guilty. I really did. I never shared that with y'all, but I felt guilty. I thought I wasn't able to give what I once could give. I struggled with it. I even thought about going back a few times. After that event at Kristen Ishihara's home, that's when I realized, I said the light bulb went bing, that's when I realized I was and had already been on a journey of generosity. Any of you that have children, grandchildren, parents, or friends, hear what I'm about to say. You already know the thing they cherish the most. It's you. They cherish you. They cherish your time. They want that moment that you're together. They want your love. They want your concern. They want your commitment. And guess what? So does God. That's what God wants. Don't misunderstand me. And don't tell blanks I said this. Don't leave here saying that financial giving is not what we're talking about. Financial giving can change lives. I have witnessed it here. Those of you who have been here for a long time, you've seen it. The way we do it especially, I know it changes lives. There's zero administration cost in what we do. We give. You give, we give. We don't build new buildings and spend crazy money, not being critical of anybody else that does, but we choose not to do that. We choose to serve, to be generous. But what I know matters most, and this is what I want you to understand today, is what matters most is where will you invest your time? Will you be generous with your time? You may never run out of money, and I hope you don't. But I promise you, you will run out of time. 
promise that. Okay, so here's the how. One thing I try to do when I do a sermon, I try to tell you how do you do this? How do you go about it? Here's what I want you to do. Choose today when you're in your alone time and you're in your prayer life or whatever, however you do it. Choose today. It's a choice to be the example, to be the example for family and friends. Be the example that they want to imitate and be like through watching how you serve. If you don't think you can do it, when you pray, you ask the Holy Spirit and God to guide you. That's the purpose of the Holy Spirit. They will guide you. If you ask for that, you will be given it. And it will be clear to you what God wants you to do. Mr. Generosity lived a long and happy life because he believed. He believed in the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And he made that his life's action. I started this off by saying the scripture that Linda gave me talked about testing God. Testing. Testing with your time and your money. Those of you that have a slight competitive streak. Testing. Test him and see if you can beat him at this game. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough to store it. This is life changing. It will change your life. I know I'm right. I've seen it. I've lived it, and I've been a minister at this church for 20-something years, and I've watched you do it over and over and over. This church and all of you are that blessing that God is talking about. And for that, I thank you all for doing that. Let us pray. Dear God and Father, open our eyes, open our hearts to realize that Generosity is not just all about money, but it is about what we commit our time and our efforts to, to serve you and others. We are your, your arms, your hands, the people that, that touch and deal with people here on this earth. Help us to do better, God. Motivate us, and may your Holy Spirit guide each and every person here. In your name we pray. Amen. Do you follow? Which Jesus do you serve? If Ephesians says to imitate Christ, why do you look so much like the world? Because my Jesus bled and died. Spend his time with thieves and liars He loved the poor and the cost of the arrogant So which one do you want to be? Blessed are the poor in the spirit Pray to be blessed with the wealth of this land Blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness Or do we ache for another taste of this world of shifting sand Cause my Jesus bled and died for my sins He spent his time with thieves and sluts and liars
fall down and worship at his holy Is how you see him as he dies for your sins But the word says he was battered and scarred Did you miss that part? Sometimes I doubt we'd recognize him Cause my Jesus bled and died He spent his time with thieves and the of these He loved the poor and the cost and the comfortable So it's your wonder you want to be Cause my Jesus would never be accepted in my church The blood and dirt on his feet might stain the carpet But he reaches for the hurting and despises the proud And I think he prefer Beale Street to the stained glass crowd And I know that he can't hear me if I cry out loud I wanna be like my Jesus I wanna be like my Jesus I wanna be like my Jesus yeah, yeah. I wanna be like my Jesus oh, 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 oh. Not a poster child for a man and prosperity but like my Jesus You see I'm tired of living for success and popularity I wanna be like my Jesus but I'm not sure what that means to be like you Jesus cause you said to live like you to love like you but then you die for me Can I be like you, Jesus? I wanna be like you, Jesus I wanna be like my Jesus Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he gave him thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper... 
he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do this for the remembrance of me. Take these gifts, O Lord, and sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on Him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. Will you please join me in our unison prayer? Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. I count on one thing The same God that never fails Will not fail me now you won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I fail me now you won't fail me now in the waiting the same God who's never late is working all things out you're working all things